A couple of weeks ago, one of my subscribers sent me this article and after taking a quick sneak peek at it, I was like, oh my goodness, I have to make a video because I have a couple of things I wanna say about this. Please leave your comments about this article down below because I'm really curious what you guys think about this. I'm Hannah, the Wife Without Kids. This channel is all about building a positive community to support you in your choice to live the child-free life. So let's go ahead and get into the video. As we approach one full year of COVID restrictions, there's new data confirming that a baby boom that some doctors and for that matter comedians expected is actually turning out to be a major baby bust. Health departments in 27 states provided records to cbsnews.com and they show a 7% drop in births in December. That would be nine months after the first lockdowns began. I don't actually see how this is a bad thing necessarily or a cause for a major concern because when the world is in crisis, when people's lives are in crisis, why on earth would you decide to have a baby? I'm not saying that nobody's allowed to have a baby during COVID, but for a lot of people, this has been very disruptive to their lives and they find themselves in a place where maybe they're not as financially secure or they're worried about what's gonna happen in the future with the world. So they may make the decision, hey, you know what? We're just gonna hold off on having kids until maybe things kind of level out and we sort of get back to normal, whatever normal is going to be. And honestly, I don't know if we're ever gonna get back into like 2019 normal, it just may be a new, new normal. And it could be just the beginning. Researchers say it matches a much bigger plunge in fertility that is decades in the making. The number of babies the average woman is expected to deliver in her lifetime has dropped from nearly four in the 1950s to less than two today. And that could present an entirely different threat to society as we know it than we were first warned about decades ago. And it's true, as I mentioned in one of my other videos, birth rates in 2018 were the lowest they've been since 1950. So yeah, definitely some declining birth rates, which has been happening for a while. I come from a family of uh, four kids. I was a kid and I remember thinking, man, our family's so freaking big. <laughs> Whenever we would go somewhere, people were constantly commenting how large our family was. So yeah, I mean, six people, that is a pretty big family. I mean, we're not like 19 kids and counting here or anything, but four kids was a lot of kids when I was growing up. I can only remember two other families that had four kids in their family. And so if you have two kids, maybe that's all people can manage. There's nothing wrong with smaller families. The stakes in this battle are far greater than any other we have ever fought. In the 1960s and 70s, an apocalyptic fear gripped America. The experts we interviewed told us population was the fundamental crisis. As the world stampeded toward 10 billion people, many researchers predicted that overpopulation would ruin us. Sometime in the next 15 years, the end will come. And by the end, I mean an utter breakdown of the capacity of the planet to support humanity. Okay, well, there's a way to make people terrified. <laughs> well, when you hear the words utter breakdown of the capacity of the planet to support humanity. That's enough to make anybody just slightly paranoid. So maybe people were like, that's it, we can't have kids anymore. I sometimes feel like the news has a way of portraying things that makes everybody completely terrified. And then we make decisions based out of fear because of what we heard on the news, which I don't think is always a healthy way to live. For the most part, I actually don't think making decisions based on fear is a good way to live, but that's just my opinion. But these days, a very different note from researchers like USC professor Dow Myers, who studies demographic trends. The trouble is that we, we overshot. We dropped it down too much now. While the global population is still growing, a major study last summer predicted it'll actually peak in 2064 and then fall by nearly a billion people by the end of the century. The reason? Fewer babies. We constantly are hearing about all the damage that people are doing to the world. Number one, there's too many of us. And number two, we're very wasteful people. So if we had slightly less people, would that not help the situation? or they don't want to have three or four or five kids because they can only handle having one or two kids, I feel like that would be a responsible decision. But let's keep watching because maybe there's a reason that they're saying that. Here in the US, in fact, we're already below the so-called replacement level by some measures. And that means fewer young people to support our otherwise aging population. That's a crisis. We need to have enough working age people to carry the load of these seniors who've deserved their retirement they deserve all their entitlements and they're gonna live out another 30 years. Okay, this is where that whole, you need to have kids so they can take care of you when you're old kind of plays into it. I think I think a little bit differently than that. 
as someone who is very capable of working, I feel like I need to be looking out for my financial future and saving up the money that I will need someday to help me with my needs. I'm not depending on other generations to then take care of me financially. Now I understand that if I am in a home somewhere, I'm going to need someone maybe to look after some of my physical needs. Nobody in the history of the, glo of the globe has had so many older people to deal with. And the pandemic is only making this problem worse, despite some early jokes that more families staying home together might mean more babies. Part of the reason we have the baby boomers is because of World War II. So that might have been something they could have mentioned because that doesn't necessarily mean that that is going to be a trend. And we thought, oh, we would see a baby boom, but we just haven't seen it. Dr. David Jaspin is chair of the Department of Gynecology and Obstetrics at Einstein Medical Center in Philadelphia. He says patients are worried about not only their health, but their finances. So you're hearing more people ask you about contraception and fewer people say, we're thinking about trying. That's absolutely true. Again, I don't see how this is a bad thing. People are finally realizing that they have a choice. They can have a kid or they cannot have a kid. So if the world is going through a pandemic and they realize, you know what? This is not a great time to have a baby and I would prefer not to have a baby. I think that's a very responsible decision. It's been a year since the pandemic first started. We don't know what things are gonna be like in three or four years and things may even themselves out and people may start having kids again once this dies down. So I feel like this is a bit of a sensational story. It's got a very sensational title, which I understand the news does because if it was a boring title nobody would be clicking it but maybe we're getting a little bit too paranoid about a problem that isn't quite as big as they're making it out to be well, i get a report every morning at 5 15 about what has happened in the last 24 hours and the first report that i see is a number of deliveries in the last 24 hours it's less than it used to be the world could look really different again in two or three years and maybe birth rates will start increasing i don't think that we know that for sure so as of right now, yes, some birth rates are down in some states. However, there were several states that obviously birth rates aren't down and maybe in some of those states birth rates are up. And so maybe that will even out over the long haul. We're on the precipice, at the very least, of not having enough children to replace our population. And so what? I mean, well, that's the interesting that's the question. question yeah. right? so, Laura Lindbergh tracks reproductive data for the Guttmacher Institute. And while she's also seeing the baby bust, she views it as a sign of progress, a marker of women's equality and freedom of choice. So it's a shift to later in life. In that shift comes more education, more career, more employment. Um, so it's a reordering of how people engage in adulthood. So finally, a spin on this that isn't all a doom and gloom and negativity. Some people just aren't choosing to have kids. Some people are having kids later in life. That doesn't mean that there's nothing positive that is going to come out of those decisions. I'm really glad she mentioned that because people are still giving back to society. They're just doing it in a slightly different way. And there are a lot of benefits from that. Dow Myers doesn't disagree. But in the bigger picture, he worries our declining birth rate is also a barometer of despair. In 1978, when you were breaking into the field, did you ever think in your lifetime you'd be talking about a declining birth rate globally? No. The statistics that they're talking about here, I believe, are being based just on the U.S. So there are other countries in the world where people are still having large families. So what changed? The burdens of life. The cost of housing, the cost of education, all these things are, have, have become more and more difficult. I think the, the boomers themselves don't realize it, how, how much harder it is for millennials today. And they think, oh, yeah, when we were young, we had to live, you know, on very little money, and we may do, and you can do the same. That's the story, right? Well, no, it really is a lot harder for the young people today. It's amazing how much harder it is. The world is a very different place than when boomers were growing up. And with society being different and life being different and expectations being different, people are going to make different choices. And maybe that looks like smaller families or more people choosing not to have babies. I'm really glad that someone recognizes that because you always hear that millennials are getting flack because, you know, they're lazy and they don't work as hard and they just want everything handed to them and like they still live with their parents when they're 30. 
well, life is different than it was in the 60s, for sure. But there are people out there who want to have kids, but don't feel they can because their finances are a mess, or they have huge college loan debt, or they can't afford a home, or childcare is crazy. So know? it sounds like it was strictly finances, but do you think part of it is you're at home and you're just really getting on each other's nerves? Well, yeah, so, yeah, everybody, there's also studies I just don't like you right now. People should be able to make the choice of whether or not they want to have children and not be made to feel that if they decide not to have children, that they are somehow now terrible people and that there's some crisis looming that they could have avoided had they had children. And to assume that there's going to be no younger generation to help take care of the older generation is just not a reason to have a child. That's just my two cents. Let me know what you guys think down below. Millennials are choosing not to have kids for multiple reasons. Go ahead and check out that video right here. Thank you so much for watching and remember you are never alone. I will see you next week.